Now, listen, there's been a million books written on the Yankee history, and all have been very good. So this is a tricky one to come up with new info. I know you're good enough to do it. Give me some thoughts on that first. Go ahead. Let me yeah, hear. Uh, I've written three of them, so I know how many there are. Uh, we tried to, you know, look, if you're going to go through all of Yankees history, there's a million pages you could write. We tried to break it down into different themes, different chapters of, you know, the great moments in Yankees history, the great legends, the architects, the guys who built these teams, the GMs, the managers, the owners, uh, the captains, the legends, the rivalries. We dug into a bunch of the rivalries, not just the Red Sox, although there are two Red Sox Yankees chapters, but the Rays and the Royals and the Orioles and teams that have been important rivals in the history. So, uh, you know, a lot of it, we go back to the days of Babe Ruth, but a lot of it skews to the last 40, maybe 50 years, because uh, those are the guys I was able to get on the phone. Ruth and Mantle didn't return the calls. Uh, but, you know, I, I <laughs> talked to a lot of the guys from the 70s and 80s, all the way up through the guys I covered. Uh, and, you know, we also went through a lot of the acquisitions, the big guys who came to New York and became stars with the Yankees, sat down with Mike Mussino, Jason Giambi, Hideki Matsui. Uh, so, you know, we, we tried to dig in a little bit. How about that great chain that began with Ruth to Garrick to DiMaggio to Mantle? I mean, that chain essentially is from 1920, 1919, all the way up to 1968. I was even born then, nine years old. <laughs> How about that wonderful chain the Yankees had? The, Yan the wonderful chain that the Yankees had for basically five decades, Mark. That's the theme of the franchise. Thoughts on that for a sec. Go it's, ahead. It's miraculous. You think about those four players and the fact that they had one of them on their team as long as they did. In some cases, they had two of them, won a lot of championships. You go back to the days of Jacob Rupert trading for Babe Ruth. Uh, and how impactful that was building a new Yankee stadium. You know, people think of George Steinbrenner as the owner of the New York Yankees, and he was for a very long time, and the most impactful owner in modern-day baseball and maybe modern-day sports. But Jacob Rupert took a team that was a second-class team in his own city, built Yankee Stadium, got Babe Ruth. All of a sudden, this team that had never won anything became the first-class operation in all of baseball. Uh, and when you look at Ruth and Gehrig and DiMaggio and Mantle, for all the great players that have been uh, in this organization. That's your Mount Rushmore. There's really no argument against it. Uh, from 65 into the late, so, you know, about an 11-year period, the Yankees, well, maybe a little less, 10-year period, the Yankees fell off. Was it all age? You know, after they won the pennant in 64, they were bad to really... You know, the early 70s, when they started to piece it back together again, and, of course, in 76, won the pennant, and away we went with the two titles. But that decade period there, they were a terrible baseball team. Thoughts on that for a sec. Let me hear. Yeah, I think it was age. It was some of their stars uh, aging out of being stars. And then, of course, at the end of that, you had George Steinbrenner come in in 1973. You had the intro introduction of free agency, and George saying, all right, Catfish Hunter, come on down. Reggie Jackson, come on down. We're going to put you in with Thurman Munson and some of these other guys. And all of a sudden, you had a team that went to the World Series in three straight years that won a couple of titles back to back. Uh, and it became the Yankees again. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. You look at right now, 13-year drought feels like forever. Uh, that 10-year, you know, 10, 13-year drought back then probably felt like even worse for a team that had won seemingly every, every other year. Well, at least this 13-year drought during the playoffs every year. In right. those days, they won 60 games. So, uh, what is the most interesting, from your perspective, Mark, when's the most, what's the most interesting era of the Yankee history? Is it... Ruth and Garrick, is it uh, 36 to 40 with the Maggio? Is it the Mantle Berry Yankees? Is it the M Munson Reggie Billy Martin group? Uh, when, in your eyes, do you find it most fascinating with this franchise? What period in time? You know, they're all fascinating in their own ways. I look at those teams in the 70s because that's when the Bronx Zoo was born. There was so much going on with that team, there were so many big personalities, big egos. Uh, it wasn't the 24 7. Uh, cable news, social media world that it is now where players are really dissected and are afraid to speak. Those guys spoke their mind. You go back and read interviews or talk to guys who played in those late 70s teams. They said whatever the heck they wanted to say. And so it was a lot more interesting to hear what they said. Uh, going back and reading interviews with Thurman Munson and Reggie Jackson, uh, it's some fascinating stuff. You wish guys would come out and speak that way today and really be honest. So I think just from a pure interest standpoint, those Bronx Zoo teams were, were as fascinating as any out there. Well, the Yankees would have won the titles if Buck was the manager instead of Torrey. Torrey was the perfect guy on that for that team, but Buck with Stick built him. Could Buck have won 4-2? Probably. Uh, I think the bigger impact would have been if Joe Torrey had taken the GM job, which he was offered before he became the manager, 
uh, maybe Buck stays. Maybe uh, he comes back. Remember, George Steinbrenner decided to try to bring Buck back at, at when he hired Tory. Right. Does Brian Cashman right. ever become the GM? Do any of those titles happen? Do they trade Derek Jeter or Mariano Rivera? There are so many sliding doors from that decision of Joe Torre to turn down the GM job and then them later to hire him. Uh, and remember, after they hired Joe, there was talk about them bringing Buck back anyway. So, uh, you know, Buck probably would have done pretty well with those teams. But I think the bigger issue was, was Stick Michael uh, and eventually Brian Cashman and, and Bob Watson sort of talking George off the ledge in terms of trading some of those guys. Remember, we've all heard about the uh, almost deal of Mariano Rivera for Felix Fermin. Uh, just think about how that would have changed the course of history. 100%. They know Bernie would have been gone a whole bit. What did you learn about how that was interesting? You know, he's sort of a, he kind of lays in the weeds, the exact opposite of his father, wants to win, but he doesn't go impetuous about it. He's not crazy. Is the desire in a different kind of way as great as his father's was? What did you learn about Hal here in the last 10 years, Mike? I'm you know, Mark, what can you tell me on that? I Point. think the thing with Hal is he, he knows who he is and he doesn't apologize for it. He is not his father, nor does he want to be his father. And I think he has a different style of running the team, but I think the passion for winning is there. Uh, and Brian Cashman even said, I, I think he's shortchanged. He gets a raw deal in terms of uh, fans' belief that he doesn't care about winning. He's playing a different game than George Steinbrenner played. He can't just go write the blank check for every free agent he wants. He doesn't have the same financial uh, advantage over every other team. Teams are signing their young players to long-term deals. All the big stars in this game, a lot of them don't get to free agency. So it's a whole different world than his father dealt with. They're different personalities. Hal's the first one to admit that. But he was around during the heyday of George. He, he was running some other businesses, but his office was right next door to George's, and he had his hand in some of the baseball stuff. Uh, so he learned at the foot of his father and of guys like Stick Michael. And uh, I think Hal wants to win as much as anybody else, but at the same time, he understands it is a business and it's not one you can be reckless with. Uh, last thing in quick, Mark, uh, does 04 from a Red Sox standpoint wipe out 78? Hmm. Different, different generations, so I think their fans who were there for 78 might say no. The fans who weren't there for 78, 04 certainly hurt a lot more, certainly wiped out 03 because the Yankees didn't go on to win the World Series. Uh, yeah, 04 was, 04 was a big one in that rivalry, that's for sure. Sure was. A wonderful job. I know you did a super job here. The Yankees, Mark Feinstein, book comes out today. Everything Yankees is right here with Mark doing an outstanding job. Mark, thank you very much. Appreciate a few minutes here this afternoon. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Dougie.